Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith, and I'm continuing my discussions on um, the main focus of this series of videos, which is the Arctic sea ice, what it's doing right now, and also I'll be talking about some recent papers that are projecting when we have the first uh, blue ocean event. And, uh, you know, I hope that you're all... Um, you know, not going to stir crazy, being shut inside as we, uh, you know, try to stay in place to um, to to uh, flatten the curve of the coronavirus, which is which is spreading exponentially around the the world right now. Um, you know, I try to exercise as much as possible these days. Um, you know, outside, you know, biking and walking at periods of time when there's very, very few people around so that you can, it's easy to maintain the uh, social distancing. And also, you know, I figure that getting as healthy as possible, you know, boosting one's immune system um, is, is, is a good thing, you know, and it's especially vitally important in this time of, um, uh, of uh, pandemic spread. So let me get right back to uh, my videos. Um, my screen here. So basically, um, if you go to um, Arctic Google Arctic sea ice graphs, click on Zach Labe's Arctic sea ice figures, and that brings you to, to this. And what, I've sh what, what is being shown here is the Arctic sea ice. Um, this is the extent, so it's areas of the Arctic Ocean that have at least 15% or more coverage of, of ice on the surface. And this is three years that are, are that are they're convert they're all close together here, and then the white diverges and separates and sets a record low in 2012, 20, 2007, and 2019 are also very low years, and here we have the mean for the 2000s, 1990s, 1980s. So the trend is ever downward. Um, this is what we see in in 2020, March 29th, 2020. Um, and, uh, you know, it depends. There's a lot of factors that, uh, that, um, that affect how much ice there will be left in any given year on a September, but the trends are all downward and we can expect a blue ocean event um, sooner rather than later. Okay, if you take the first uh, three months of the, the first few months, to January and February and March of the year, um, you can expand the x-axis, and this is the plot here. Um, so it's showing the same data as on the previous graph, but focusing on, on this year so far, the first few months. And here is our current situation. This is the mean in the 80s, 90s, 2000s, 2010s, and here's where we currently are, a very sharp uh, recent drop of sea ice extent. This is another plot. Um, of the Arctic sea ice extent, where it shows the, the gray area is plus or minus two standard deviations of variability. And what you can see is we're poking along the lower part of that curve. So we're into the, into the between two and three standard deviations. So, so exceptionally low levels this year thus far. This is the Arctic Basin sea ice, if you consider the Beaufort, Chukchi, East Siberian, Laptev, and Central Arctic. And where, where are those regions? Um, you can always go back to Arctic sea ice graph and go to the bottom, and there's a map of the Arctic which you can expand. So you can see, pick a, see those specific regions. And um, right now, the ext so the extent is, uh, it's hard to see, you know, it's following along many other years, but you can see here, you know, the minimum in September, mid-September from uh, 2012, and these other ones, we've got 2007, and we've got uh, uh, 2019, you know, pushing low part of the envelope. If you look at the regional areas of Arctic sea ice, the Barents Sea, you know, is pushing record lows here. The Bering Sea looks like a very, a very steep drop here into record territory. Greenland Sea is pushing along the bottoms, and the other regions haven't really started melting out yet. 
If you look at the sea ice extent change uh, from 2002 to 2020, then this is the, so this is the anomaly. This is the change from the um, from the norm. Okay, uh, this is for March. These are values in March, and you can see the uh, the drop here. So they're all zeroed at the beginning of March. You know, they're all brought to the same level, and you can see the drop and compare this year to to other years. Okay, very significant drop. If you look at the sea ice daily change and extent, anytime we have over a hundred thousand. Um, Square kilometers, that's like a hundred, a hundred, that's in terms of thousands, that's a century drop, people call it, on the sea ice forums. And to get to those sea ice forums, I'll just give a plug for them. Go to the Arctic sea ice graph and click on the Arctic sea ice blog, you know, which is Nevin's blog. Click on Discussions Arctic sea ice forum, select the, uh, you know, the, the, um, the melt season and there's loads of good information on there. I highly recommend it. So what you can see is the minimum was of sea ice, or the maximum of sea ice in March. There's ice still growing, but the maximum was here, uh, you know, in early March um, with these severe drops, bringing it uh, to below the maximum. A little bit of recovery here, but not much, and now significant drops. So it's very unusual to get over 100,000 Square kilometer drops um, early, you know this this early, you know in, in March, and we had one here. We had another one here, almost reaching 150,000 square kilometer drops. So this is very very unusual for this time of year. This is the Arctic sea ice annual minimums and when they occur. So there's the minimum in 2012 in mid September. In 2019, we reached the minimum here. Um, set, set tying for, uh, you know, second uh, lowest, you know, with tying with 2007 essentially and 2016. And you can see all the other years here. So, you know, the trends are clearly to minimums, you know, much lower and lower and lower. But they're, you know, they're, they're all sort of clustered from, you know, first to second week of September typically. Um, that doesn't seem to be changing. And this is the Arctic uh, sea ice annual max. So here's where we were in 2020, uh, you know, early March. Okay, and then a significant drop since. And uh, these are the, so the 2019 was, was uh, you know, here, here's 2019, uh, you know, 2012 uh, record year, low year was up here. So the record low doesn't necessarily correlate to the lowest um, annual max. Okay, so but you can see we've we're, we've had a very rapid start to sea ice loss so far this year. This is Arctic sea ice on March 29th. This is the current, and this is the previous um, years from 2003 to 2020. This is the mean in the 80s, the 90s, and the 2000s. So the trends are all pointing down. Okay, now we'll have a look at the um, a little bit of uh, just following through what Zach has posted here on his blog. So we've got an, a bit about, about Antarctica, Antarctic sea ice. Of course, the seasons reverse, so it's going into the um, we're going into the Antarctic winter. The extent is growing, and you can see here the curve for 2020, and it seems to have flattened out. So it'll be interesting to watch that in the next week or two to see if this trend continues. We had, we've had some years recently where the ice in Antarctica just doesn't grow uh, anywhere as quickly as it normally would. Okay, so we'll go back to, um, okay, uh, research areas, Arctic sea ice volume and thickness. Okay, so this is the, uh, this is data, this is February sea ice thickness and volume from 1979 to 2010. So the average over the month of February, you can, this is the sea ice thickness in meters. And you can see as we get to 2020, the only thick ice really is near the Canadian, just north of the Canadian archipelago. And you can see, you know, there's lots of thick ice throughout the basin in previous years, 
but as we go through the years, there's less and less ice, and it's only thick near the Canadian Archipelago. And this is the sea ice volume in February, the average volume, and you can see how that you know has has uh, fluctuation in February, but the trend is also down. Okay, this is um, sea ice thickness in February. Okay, um, which I showed on the previous uh, movie, the animation, and this is the anomaly. So the ice used to build up and get ridged and be very thick along the Canadian Archipelago Islands and Greenland here, but now this ice is several meters uh, less thick than it was before, you know, extending all the way out. And of course, now that the ice is much thinner here, then when it melts out, you can get lots of ice leaving the Arctic Basin by trickling through the islands of the Canadian Archipelago and coming through the nearest strait here. Uh, not only, and, you know, going out to the Atlantic, out to the Pacific as well, where warm water is also coming in and, and melting the ice. But the biggest change has been, at least in February, has been in, in this region. This is the Arctic sea ice volume. Um, this is the average from 1981 to 2010. Okay, and this is where we are. Um, this is for February, again, the month of February. So normally it would have about 26, um, 26,000 cubic kilometers of sea ice. And here's where we are in the 80s, the 90s, uh, the 2000s, and, and uh, 2020 is right here. So it's more like 19,000 uh, cubic kilometers okay, in February. So the ice is thinner. It doesn't cover such a large area and therefore its volume is dra rapidly dropping. Here's the Arctic sea ice volume throughout the year, January through to January, end, of, end of December, in the 80s, 90s, 2000s, 2010s. Now, here's where we are in 2020 right now, so it's not the lowest on record, but it's, going, it's, it's trailing the lower parts of these curves, and what you can see is that you know, the, the peak in the maximum extent just occurred here, you know, in early March. Uh, but the ice is still, the volume still grows because it's still cold in the Arctic and that heat goes through the ice and it can, ice is an insulator. So the thinner the ice is, the more cold from the air can go through the ice, cool the water underneath and uh, cause the ice to grow thicker underneath and so the volume actually peaks. You know, the volume peak is delayed um, from the extent peak. The extent peak is in March. The volume peak is looks like it's in about, you know, uh, you know May, uh, you know early May or late April. Okay, and then we can once we have the volume and the extent and area, we can calculate the Arctic sea ice thickness. So here's the average thickness. This is um, this is in February again. This is throughout the year, January throughout the year, the, av the average thickness in those, you know, plotted throughout the year. And so what you can see, so the extent has peaked here, the volume has peaked here, and the thickness peaks a little bit after the volume. So the ice is thickening up, but we're also, you know, we can actually, this is the average um, ice thickness of the whole. So as the thinner ice starts to melt around the edges, then when you take the average of the thickness, thickness of the ice that's left, you can still get a bit of a gain for a short period of time, and then, the, and, and then it drops off quite quickly. So, this, so we're, we're pushing along the bottom. There's only, you know, it, it's not setting a record, but it's all along the bottom, um, near, near, near record, and uh, you know, it's a relentless loss of ice in the Arctic. All these signs are indicating that. This is the sea ice thickness for different years. Okay, here's where we were in 2020. This hasn't been updated um, for up to, you know, where we are now, but it, sh it shows you the trends. It shows you, you know, it shows you the trends and when the ice is thickest and how quickly it's dropping. Thank you for listening and I'll continue um, with another video. Thanks.